Hey guys, whoa Phil, dramatic title alert. Yeah, well it is a dramatic title, but it's true. It's not clickbait. I did go to Le Hospital or whatever French people <laughs> call hospitals, but spoiler alert, I'm fine. I'm not dying. Everything's okay. Just in case you were worried. Thanks if you're worried about me. What a sweetie you are. But I just thought I'd tell you now in case you were like, oh, is it okay? Unless I did die and I just haven't figured out I'm a ghost yet. Oh my God. So I thought I'd have a little, my disturbing, health incident <laughs> story time. So to tell you this story, I think we need a bit of context. So I'd like to take you back to the caveman times to show that I'm not a very resilient person. I'm someone that's got terrible eyesight. So as a cave person, I wouldn't be able to tell the saber tooth tiger from the rabbit that I needed to catch. Also, I'm really clumsy. So I'd probably fall over myself into the fire that I've just discovered because I like to think that I was the cave person that discovered fire. And also, as you know, I get really queasy and travel sick. So I couldn't ride on the back of my woolly mammoth, but Another thing, which I don't really talk about much, is I get headaches all the time. Like, three times a week, I'll have a headache. And I went to my northern doctor when I was a kid, and he just went, I don't know, Philly, some people just get headaches. So ever since then, I take some ibuprofen, it goes away. And I figured if it was something serious, I'd probably be dead by now, because <laughs> it's been so long, I'm sure I'm fine. So headline, get headaches. I'm not very resilient. Don't usually worry about it. Rewind to last week pause for dramatic effect. So around the start of last week, I was feeling pretty crappy for about three days. I wasn't sure what was wrong with me. I was hot and cold. I was shivering. Dan was like, why are you turning the heating up? And I'm sat there under 14 blankets like, <gasps> I'm freezing. Along with this hot and coldness, I also had a headache, but it was different to the headaches that I'm used to getting. It was like, a clamping feeling. That's all I can describe it as, like a clamping on the front of the back of my head. Like an alligator chomped onto my head and wasn't letting go. And it was getting progressively worse throughout the day. Along with this shivering, I thought maybe I'm getting the flu. Maybe something's off with me. I don't know. But as I'm used to getting headaches, I just took some ibuprofen and went to bed. Anyway, I had one of the weirdest nights sleep ever because I was aware of this headache in my dreams. So I was having a dream like I was hanging out with Chris Hemsworth and adopting a corgi, but in my dream, Dream Phil still had this pressurizing, pounding headache. So even in my dreams, I was like, something's wrong. Something is wrong with my head. I don't know what's happening. And then after about four hours of crazy, half awake, half asleepness, I thought I have to get up. I have to do something about this. So it's about 5 a.m. and I got out of bed, went upstairs in my emoji pajamas, kind of slumped up the stairs in a sleepy daze, on the lookout for some ibuprofen. And then going up the stairs, this headache was getting even worse. It was like every stair was like, boom, boom. And then I walked into the bathroom upstairs, which is where we keep the tablets. And then that was the moment I was like, something's not right. Something is not right with me right now. So I looked in the mirror and then I looked down into the pillbox and my vision just went so weird. I can't really explain it. So I'm gonna try and do it in Final Cut to show you, but it kind of looked like this. It was like double vision with a little bit of black and white flashes. And then all of a sudden it was like, everything just went boom. And then I was on the floor. I don't recall falling on the floor. I don't recall fainting. It was like, I fully had a time jump and I'm now on the floor. And I was then freaking out, just thinking what's happening to me? Am I dying? Is this the end? I don't know. But I recently watched a video by PJ about his health and he was saying it too, that he is the main character in his story. So your brain has this weird negative thing where it's like, this doesn't happen to me. This, this isn't, this isn't how my day's meant to go. So I just thought, no, it's fine. I'm okay. I tried to stand up, which was a really big mistake because then again, boom, fully blacked out. And this time when I opened my eyes, I was lying flat on my back. I know I'd banged my knee because that was really hurting and my head was still throbbing. And at that point, a few thoughts went through my head. First of all, I thought, am I really gonna die in the worst room in the house? Because that room, I hate that room. And I was like, <laughs> then I thought, if I'm a ghost, am I gonna haunt this room? And is my ghost gonna have emoji pajamas? Those were the three, <laughs> those were the three things I thought. I wasn't like, I need to get an ambulance. I was like, I, I, re I resigned myself to death and I'm scared my ghost is gonna be wearing these emoji pajamas. And then, genius, I realized Dan is in the house and I can call for Dan. So I'm just lying on the floor, just going, Dan, Dan, Dan. And I think he's a really heavy sleeper, so after about the 10th Dan, I hear a, what? And because I'm still confused, I can't think of the word for fainting, so I just said, I fell over. And then I hear him go, what the? Dan comes up the stairs in his underwear, holding a pillow like this. I don't know if he was gripping the billow because he thought there was a home invader and this was his weapon. Didn't offer to put it under my head. He was just holding it. I explained what happened and he was freaking out a bit now and he was like, should I call an ambulance? What should we do? But the only thing I knew I wanted as like a moment of 100% clarity 
was toast. I just wanted some toast. I was like, I, I'm okay, I'm starting to feel better. Just make me some toast and I'll be fine. And then I make my way over to the sofa, eat some toast, and I start to feel a bit better now. So the thing I should have done as a responsible human is gone to the hospital straight away, but I was so tired, it was five in the morning, I'd had the toast and I was feeling so much better, I thought, you know what? I more than anything just want to go to sleep now. So, Kind of a bad idea. Went to sleep, and the next day I still had this terrible headache when I woke up. So I thought, this is bad. This is what is wrong with me. So I went and took myself to the hospital. And the doctor is also legitimately worried about me because it's not something that should happen to someone my age. You shouldn't just be fainting. Like, what if I was in the middle of the road? This is bad. So the first thing I had to have is loads of blood tests. And the nurse was really nice, but the first question she asked me was, do you like needles? Who would say yes to that question? Like, yeah, love me some needles. Just get them in me. More needles, the better. So <laughs> I said no, because I'm not too bad with needles, but I just can't look at it. I can't look at it happening. So I looked away while she vampired my arm and they took my blood away for testing. And the doctor called me back and said, look, it's up to you, but I think we need to give you a CAT scan to have a look at your brain or a CT scan. It didn't look like a giant cat, that's all I know. So that's a decision I have to make because they zap you with radiation. Kind of a no-brainer because I was like, maybe I'll get superpowers. But no, it was a serious decision. But I thought, you know what? I did collapse. That's weird. I'll go along and have the CAT scan. Which is a bit scary because it's like in the movies. You've got to lie on this board and then there's machines whirring around your head. Anyway, I was waiting for the results for the CT scan, which is very scary because you don't know what they're going to say. And it's all those things that you see in a movie where they tell the person, Hey, you're dying. So I was really worried. So the doctor came out to the waiting room and said, Philip, we need to discuss your CT scan results. Will you follow me? And I was like, that means I'm dying. She wouldn't say, follow me, go into a private room unless I'm, something's wrong. So we walk this like long corridor and I'm like shaking, I'm worried. Get into the room, shut the door. She says, right, everything's fine. You should start with everything's fine. Tell me everything's fine before you say hello. She's like, everything's fine, but let's go have a chat about it. Oh, that was, I mean, I, she's, just, she's just doing a job and she's got to talk to a million people, but I mean, I mean, so everything was fine. There was no weird things in my brain, but she said, that's not the end of the story because we still don't know why you collapsed. And there might be things you can't see on a CT scan that we need to see on an MRI scan, which is like the evolved Pokemon of a CT scan. But then she told me I'd have to be admitted to hospital and it could take up to three days before I can leave. I don't want to be in the hospital for three days. I started to feel better now. I didn't want to be there. I didn't like it. I wanted to go home. So Dan came to see me a few hours later. He brought a care package of some snacks and my Switch. So I wasn't too bored. But then about 10 o'clock at night, the head doctor brain doctor, Rockter, came to see me and he was like, why are you here? You look so well. You look like a well human. I was like, I know, right? Just let me go home, doc. He was like, okay, I'm going to let you go home if you pass the two tests. One involves peeing in a cup and one involves walking in a straight line. Uh, <laughs> thankfully not at the same time. So I did that. The walking in a straight line, I had to walk like this and then tap my nose as I was walking. <laughs> I think he was just trolling me, like what medical thing is that proving? Anyway, he said I seemed well enough to go home, which was such a relief because I didn't want to spend four days in a hospital. Went home, didn't die in the night, bonus. And then I got a phone call that my MRI was ready to happen. So I'd only ever seen MRI scans in movies. They had to inject dye into my blood, which would then like light up in my brain when they were looking at it. So that freaked me out as well. Before I went in the machine, they asked if I wanted some music. So they put some headphones on me because the machine's super loud. It's like a lawnmower is being hit against your head. And I said, yeah, just give me some pop music or something relaxing. So I was expecting like Enya or something. I get in the machine and this heavy rap starts playing and it's so angry, but I was, <laughs> but I was too awkward to say anything. So for the entire hour, I was just listening to angry rap music as they were zapping my brain with these lawnmower noises as well. The hardest thing was I was told to stay completely still. If anyone knows me, staying still for more than five minutes it's an issue for, for Phil Lester. So that was the hardest thing. And I was lying there and all of a sudden I got such an itch on my nose and there was nothing I could do about it. So I was just like, oh God, I can't move. But I need to itch my nose. So halfway through the procedure, they gave me like a little remote control I could squeeze if I was scared. And I squeezed it. She was like, is everything okay? I was like, I just really need to itch my nose. Please can you, <laughs> please can you let me itch my nose? So thankfully, they let me get in and have a good scratch because otherwise I think I would have just like ripped my entire face off. MRI was done. I had to wait another agonizing 24 hours before I found out if there was anything wrong with my brain. 
went to see the doctor and this was the coolest thing. I got to look through my brain with the doctor and I thought we could have a look at my brain together. It's like a tour of my brain. Real brain edition. I haven't looked at this properly, so I'm quite excited. A spooky, scary Fillington. That is so weird. Look at my teeth. You can see my wisdom tooth has not gone through yet. And then my spine is there, which is good. Never seen that before. All right, here we go. We're slowly moving up my head. What? Oh, look at my eyes. That is horrifying. That looks like something from Alien, but worse. Ooh, so squishy. It looks like, this sounds stupid. It looks more like a brain than I thought it would. It's crazy that that is just the machine that controls me. Like that is me and everything else is just like, a flesh robot. I've got such pursed lips, was I trying to look sexy the whole time in the scanner? I'm like... Is it weird that I can kind of recognize myself in that or am I being stupid? It kind of looks like it says something like, Mirror new. <laughs> is this a sign from God? I mean, that is a sexy brain there. Look at that. Such perfect edges. So squishy and delicious. And then I think this is the coolest bit. This is the dye that they've injected into my brain and you can see all of the blood vessels and where they're moving. Crazy that that is happening inside my head right now. What am I? What is a human? This is insane. So that was the tour of my brain. Hope you had a nice time. Uh, the doctor then said, look, there's nothing wrong with your brain. You actually have a healthier brain than most people. So good news. But then there's the question of what is wrong with me? Why did it happen? So the doctor told me that what I had was a vasovagal attack, which I think is with doctory way of saying, basically you fainted. But we came to this conclusion because I explained to him about 10 years ago, a similar thing happened. I had terrible tonsillitis and then I collapsed and then I went to hospital, they didn't know why it happened. What he says happens with my body is if it gets really stressed about something, like those fainting goats, you know? <laughs> is this an excuse to watch some fainting goat videos? <laughs> like these. Yeah, um, my body, if it gets really stressed about something, for this one was the horrible headache, just decides, nope, I'm not working anymore, Phil, and shuts down, and that's it. Your blood pressure drops, your heart rate drops, and for a second, you just don't function. He said, if I'm feeling fine now, it's probably not gonna happen again. I just need to look after myself a bit more. He said, if I am feeling really run down, I should stay in bed and I should take it easy, and I shouldn't overwork myself, which is something that I do a lot. I'm, I burn the candle at both ends, which is probably some good advice. I should chill more, I shouldn't work until three in the morning, and I should just let my body chill out sometimes. So that was what happened. If you are a doctor and looked at my MRI scan, you might know that I had some wateriness in my sinuses. So we thought that might have been what caused the attack is that I had some sinus infection and my body was freaking out about that, which is why I was shivering and stuff. So I had some antibiotics, which could have had a side effect of hyperactivity, but they just made me really sleepy and queasy. Uh, so that's why this video took so long to make. But yeah, I'm fine now. I might faint at any time but my brain isn't gonna kill me, so good news. And I hope you are in good health. If you do feel weird and you have the facilities, because I know not everyone does, you should see someone about it. Because like I said, and like PJ said, even though you are the main character in your story, things can go wrong with you, because they can go wrong with anyone at any time. And it's just, if you think there's something wrong, you should get it checked out. If you enjoyed delving around in my pink squishy head, please give me a thumbs up. You can also subscribe, see when I make my next video. If you're still craving a bit of Halloween, go watch me and Dan carve some pumpkins. But I hope you're well, I hope you don't faint. Have a lovely day from me and my brain. Goodbye.